G'day guys, welcome to another episode of Stuff and Such. Today we're working inside the house a little bit. So this is the room I've been working on the past week or so and uh, it's getting to the point where I need to address one of the projects that I've been kind of thinking about on my my house. When you live out in the country a little, little ways owning a house there's a there's uh, some some extra worries that kind of creep in your mind a wee bit, and one is that the local fire department really has zero chance of actually making it to your house and saving anything, which is unfortunate, but that's just the reality of it. Before we get started on today's video, I'll get you to go ahead and subscribe and follow the channel; It'd be greatly appreciated. Being as we don't have a local fire department, I've been kicking the idea around of installing a uh, residential fire suppression system. Whether it takes care of the fire, any potential fire by itself, or buys extra five minutes for the local fire department to arrive. Not only that, but if it can provide sufficient time for any of my family to escape and saving a life, to me, that's far more worthwhile. One thing you can always say, well, you have your insurance and that'll cover your house and all that stuff, but in reality, you lose everything. Your life is uprooted for a year, two years, you're traumatized for it. It's just, if you can prevent it, in my opinion, I feel that I should try and do something about it. And unfortunately, we've had a few house fires in this area that makes it even more evident. And not only that, when I was young, no, I can't remember, but it was something my, my own family had to endure, was going through a fort or a house fire. And that was something that has, I'm sure, stuck with my parents and my older siblings for their their life. And unfortunately, there another we've had one. Unfortunately, one of the house fires in our area. They, unfortunately, a woman was fairly uh, was injured fairly fairly badly. And in a house similar design second story quite high off the building off the floor off the ground rather and her escape was only through a window and it and it uh, it was not, not a good situation so i feel if i can prevent those 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 incidences with just simple preventative maintenance it's something i should really look into so that kind of brings to where i am now with this room it's come to the point that now I either need to make the decision to install a fire suppression system or to overlook all these things I've spoken to you about and just go the traditional method with your fire alarms that cost $100 a piece which is 10 times what a sprinkler is going to cost you but provide nothing besides giving you an alert and I, I would I prefer to go this way. So anyways, where we're at today is I don't know if these sprinklers, if they can run on half inch pecs or if they must have three quarter inch pecs. Kind of when I look at, see if you look in here, what happens is the glass will break from the heat because they're all heat sensitive. And then this little brass button will pop out. But based, you can see that size of that button it's quite a substantial size so I think that if you look at the size between the two they're very similar and I think that there won't be sufficient flow with half inch pecs. One of the things I really liked about uh, the sprinkler system is they only go off when that glass breaks because of temperature. Not, with spring, not, not like fire alarms that go off when you burn your toast or you too, too loudly or whatever that, that you know they are they're just finicky finicky annoying things and I probably wrecked all mine with all the drywall dust and sawdust that I've been producing over the past few years building this home so with with this design 
you don't have those issues. And I'm very surprised that actually building codes don't ask for them to be a mandatory install on a new installation. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to rig up a, a test, test uh, sprinkler to see if we have sufficient flow, what I can expect for spray range. That way I can make an educated decision on which way I need to go here. So I'm going to have this restriction, I'm going to have this restriction in this T. So I'm going to have a section, a three foot section between the T and the sprinkler, and then a three foot section between the T to the uh, connection that'll hook onto a garden hose. And then we'll light a little fire there in a can or something, and uh, we'll We'll just see how much heat it takes to pop this and see the spray range and then we can go from there. All right, so here we have our little test rig all rigged up here. That should connect into a garden hose. That'll provide restriction within the middle and we have our sprinkler on the end. So I want to show you the reason why I'm doing this in our upstairs. As you can see, the upstairs window is probably 16 feet off the ground. That's going to hurt if you jump out. And if we look around, The way I designed this house, bedrooms are all upstairs, so the sleeping quarters are all upstairs. And then you go straight down. So basically, if there's ever a fire downstairs, you can't get down stairs all right guys we got her hooked up to the house there that was quite miserable um, so we're gonna light the fire up here we're gonna see roughly how hot it needs to get to bust and see what the spray is hopefully we don't get too soaked and all that good stuff All right guys, we got ourselves all dried up here and inside and thinking over the uh, test. It would seem that the half inch PEX doesn't quite have enough uh, flow rate for the amount of water that it recommends. You can see the size of the hole. It's probably a bit bigger than the smallest diameters of the half inch PEX. So, I was getting a good amount of volume, but I didn't have the pressure, and the pressure is kind of what throws the water. A lot of my flow was cutting, a lot of my water was being distributed within the six to seven foot range diameter, and but I was reaching out to probably 10 feet. Um, so that's kind of, I wasn't getting quite the uh, splash that I was hoping for, but I was getting a fair bit of water if that makes any sense. So we're going to step up to a three quarter inch diameter on the next test and we'll see how that performs and compare results. Alright guys, thanks for watching. We'll uh, catch you on the next video. If you could take a minute, subscribe. It'd be awesome. 
we'll hopefully catch you on the next one.